Hi, welcome to the 3D Pen Den. If you got a 3D pen recently and tried to play with it, you probably found that it's fun and easy to make 2D things with it, but you might be wondering, how do I get from here to there? Or from here to there? Or from here to there? The answer is in many different ways. So let's explore our options. If you have seen my two videos, Beginner's Guide to 3D Pen Use, part one and two, and if you haven't, the links are in the description, you may remember I talked about the three S's for success with 3D pen. Surface, strategy, and stability. We are not going to talk about surface today because I already have two videos about it. The links are also in the description. But let me just say here, it is an important S. Looking at this bridging example demo, for example, here it works quite well and here not at all, and the pen, brand of PLA filament, and skill level of the user are all the same. The only difference that makes it or breaks it is the different surface. This video is going to be about some of the different possible strategies you can use to get from 2D to 3D. Most of them fall into four general categories joining intersecting planes, joining parallel planes, working on curved surfaces, and working flat and heat forming later. Each of these really need a separate video, but let's look at what they can do for you. The simplest way to make something 3D is to take two flat planes and join them together. As we know from origami, a single fold can make a flat sheet of paper three-dimensional. When you do join the two planes, remember the third S for success, which is stability, and tape everything down. It will make your life a lot easier if things do not budge as you are trying to join them. Another way to make a corner is to stand one plane up and just continue drawing around the corner. You can't always do this, but when you can, it creates way cleaner corners. to the third dimension is to radiate the planes from the center out. You can have as many as you need to create your desired shape. Let's start with something simple like an apple. We want the freedom to make any curved surface not just square things. This allows for the curves of the apple to be drawn on a flat supported surface because that's where it's easy to do it and lift them up later to make a curved support structure that you can cover either partially or completely as much as you wish
Another super simple way of making something 3D is bridging between any two parallel planes, as you may remember from the bridging video. Also make curved shape this way from as many layers as you need. Except this way, you can make your custom shape hollow if your particular project calls for it, like when you are making a basket or a vessel. Remember, you can only bridge in straight lines, so make all your curls on the flat planes. This method is good for large 3D see-through things that will have some other large 3D see-through things inside it. 3D printers work by sticking zillions of parallel planes one on top of each other. And you can do it too if you have a patience of an angel or a South Korean. I don't. So therefore, I use this technique only for small projects. But a lot of people get very nice results with this. So I thought I would include it here for reference. Contour lifting is a way of sculpting a form by reversing a contour map of the object. You just put the elevation back into it. You don't need the parallel planes to be sitting directly on top of each other to define a shape. Here is how to make a bottle shape. And here is how to make a concave and convex shape to make a chalice, but it does work for asymmetrical objects too. challenging to draw on a curved surface than on a flat one, but sometimes it is easier to find an existing curved surface to use as a form. You just have to find the right shape and size. And make sure the object you pick can take the heat of the pen. For example, styrofoam will melt on you if it's not covered. And pay attention to the first S, the surface. You may need to either spray it or cover it with masking tape for the plastic to stick. Details are in the video Making Spheres Part 2. Link is down in the description too. Sculptors have been working over armatures for a long time to save material, make the forms lighter or just to shape things easier. So if your shape doesn't have to be hollow, you can also work over some material that will ultimately stay inside your sculpture permanently.
take many forms and will require a separate video or two. So for now, just a word about why you would want to use it. A. Flat shapes are easier to make. And B. You can do all kinds of surface treatments that can only be done to flat pieces. You can, for example, smooth things with baking without having to sand it or emboss textures in it in a variety of ways. But you need to do that while it's still flat and then form it into a desired shape. This box is just a simple welding of flat squares, but it is possible to curve the shapes too without disturbing the embossed patterns. There is no time left in this video to get into details of all this. So subscribe if you haven't yet and hit the bell notifications button to stay tuned so you don't miss any of it.